Let's get the game on. There we go. So, playing this Black Sad and what l last time happened, we go to find information, we go to the chief officer, uh, Smirnov, and we get info from him. So, we have to do it again. The speak over. You see, Black Sad. I can't reveal police information. Okay, let's take it again. It wasn't the right voice for the this police officer. Smell of. You see, you see, Black Sad. I can reveal police information. Even if I had any leads, I could share them with you. Couldn't share with. Tear them with you. I don't know how to speak. Not even if they were lying on this very table. Now, if you you'll excuse me, I have urgent matters to attend to. Dance autopsy. Besides the usual details such as height and weight, there was something else. Then I had four mark on his neck and then we go to investigation and we have a very hard hard and long brainstorming and we connecting things together and then we get invited this Olari the illegal book booker mafia person invite to the car and we could investigate the Jordan's the well the boxer anyway his apartment I ain't looking for Bobby Yell too you know that's why I am taking you to this place feel free to search all you need what do you want from me let me scratch your back if you scratch mine. Deal. I don't make that deal. My god, no. Anyway. Yeah, and uh, we continue. Hopefully we continue from the apartment and try to find idea how we can run away with this old Ari and not tell him anything. Continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have looking everything here. Yeah, I think so. Not much else. Surprising things. Hopefully, I remember how to play this. This is two weeks ago I played last time. I have a little bit holiday last Saturday. Hey, window. With people like O'Leary, you just never know. I didn't want to put Mary at risk. Why not take her a little something instead? Yes. This are one. Yes, he found a way. I fear that I could do. Oh, okay. I've never trusted angels. Mr. Blacksad? What a. Surprise. When they fall. They turn into demons. Joey told me he was going to spend the afternoon painting the gym and that Bobby would be fixing something up on the roof. So after I found the body and called the police, I went to Bobby's place, but he wasn't there. So you knew that Yale was with Dunn when he died, and yet you told no one. I guess I just forgot. 
Everything is so confusing. I'm sorry, Mr. Blacksad. Don't be. I'm here to figure it all out. What's your relationship with Bobby Yale? He was like a son to Joey, and we were about to get married, so, you know. Okay. I think it's time to set things straight. I know you were cheating on Dunn with Yale. Or was it the other way around? No. How can you even think of something like that? How can you convince me otherwise? I found a picture at Yale's apartment. It's you and him on a roller coaster. Care to explain, Miss Purnell? I'm not white, Mr. Black said. What? Seven of my great-grandparents were white. The eighth was black. According to law, I'm a black citizen, even if my skin says the contrary. Do you know what that means when you're born in North Arlington, Alabama? Segregated schools and a worse education for colored children. We even have different water fountains, for God's sake. The separate but equal doctrine and all that... That crap. And all the lies. That's why I moved here. No one knows what color my great-grandparents were. I'm black too, and I don't hide it. Well, at least you're a man. In any case, what's that have to do with Bobby Yale? He's my nephew, Mr. Black said. Joe and I first started taking care of poor Bobby when my sister died. That was when he was almost 15. The three of us went on that trip to Luna Park. So this is where Joe Dunn comes in. Bobby was the only one who knew about me and Joey. We were afraid that someone would use my past to ruin his career. It's not the first time I hear that story. I'm sorry I accused you so lightly. Don't worry, I understand. Your secret is safe with me. Thanks. It means a lot to me. Are you sure you don't know where your nephew is? I've looked everywhere. He's nowhere to be found. Don't worry. I'll find him. Thank you. Mary smells like... Actually, the whole room smells like a pie fresh out of the oven. So I can't identify any other fragrances. I think the puppy is, is here somewhere. Fresh out of the oven. The whole room smells like pie. TV and radio all in one. Where will these mad times lead us? Oh my god. About Sonia Dunn and the ring. Well, I told her about you and Joe Dunn. I had no choice. And what did she say? I don't think she took it too well, but she might come to understand it. That cherry pie smells so good. I'm starting to get hungry. Thanks. I pulled it out of the oven right before you arrived. Oh, where are my manners? I'm the worst hostess in the world. Let me go get a knife from the kitchen. And you must be thirsty. Uh, let me see. OJ, coffee? Coffee. I'll take some coffee, thanks. Sorry, I was going to help you with that. I'm eating all, all the pies. Okay. <laughs> Everything.
You should open a bakery and sell these pies. <laughs> Thanks. Joey used to say the same thing. Now that there's almost no pie left, the scent has also disappeared. Interesting. Now Mary smells like a huge dog. Mary, when are you going to stop lying? I know your nephew is here. I can smell him. What? No. I already told you I don't know where he is. Stop playing around and tell me. Where is he? You can search the whole house if you want. Go ahead. He's not here. Wait a minute. She's not the one who smells like that. That's where Bobby Yale's scent is coming from. So, that's why you were sitting there. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Could you step aside so I can check, please? Please go. Mary, for Christ's sake, put that knife down, would you? Leave Aura. Mary, I came here to help. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. Leave her alone! Bobby! Relax. I to look this. Ah! Finally. Why this doesn't fork? Call an ambulance. Do as I say. Go on, call an ambulance. Do it now. In the face of a heart attack, there's two things you can't forget. One, stay calm. Two, one chest compression per second. Oh, I one, Mississippi. <laughs> two, Mississippi. Three, Mississippi. Four, Mississippi. Five, Mississippi. I fail. My God. Let's try again. One, Mississippi. Two, Mississippi. Three, Mississippi. Four, Mississippi. Five, Mississippi. What did I do? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. What did he say? I don't remember. <laughs> Better die. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, uh -huh. four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi. Seven Mississippi. Hey. <gasps> now I do it. Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Thank you. <laughs> you almost Bobby. died. <gasps> A little bit Bobby. practice. Thank you. <sighs> oh. I had lots of reasons to consider this a great day. 
I had investigated a suicide case. I had discovered that, in truth, we were dealing with a murder. I had found and captured the prime suspect. And I had saved a life. And yet, everything in me screamed that something was going wrong. Terribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> God. I need more practice push these buttons. Promise me, Promise you won't take the law into your own hands. I'd like, I'd like to think we're not just vigilantes. I want a gun! What the hell? Bang, bang, bang! A fair amount of violence, extortion, and casualty. I hate detectives. That you, Smirnoff? You seem agitated. Nightmare? <sighs> yeah, I have a lot of those. Yeah, that makes two of us. Anyway, why don't you go home? In his current condition, Yale's not going anywhere. Besides, we'll take it from here. Thanks, but that won't be necessary. I can watch Yale on my own. No doubt. I just saw exactly how vigilant you always are. As for what happened yesterday, I asked you not to get involved, or at least give me a heads up. If I hadn't intervened, Bobby Yale could be dead. If you had warned me, maybe we could have avoided a heart attack. Anyway, what's done is done. When, when exactly did you realize that he killed Dunn? He didn't kill? Out of sheer curiosity, I'm a cop after all. To be honest, I'm not so sure Yale killed anyone. How about the motive? Any ideas? I'm not sure. Theories, but that's about it. In any case, hopefully Yale will tell us more. Would you let me ask him some questions when he wakes up? I know you will, with or without my permission. So, I'd rather not feel betrayed. In exchange, drop by the station when you can. Your investigation could really help my men. Who, by the way, must be waiting for me to interrogate Mary Purnell. Boy, she was hard to pry from Yale's side. She's been through a lot in the past days. Be nice to her. Of course. In spite of it all, we're not just vigilantes. And as for you, go get some rest. God knows you need it. I can't promise anything. <laughs> Tell the nurses to look at that face of yours. You look like a film detective in his last scene. I'm afraid this film isn't over yet. For your sake, I hope you're wrong. You're in charge now, officer. Oh, okay. I'll send you relief in six hours. Understood? Doctor. Who are? Oh, detective. Congratulations. You fared pretty well against that kid. Better than most would have. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. Let's just say I got lucky. We, as a society, simply don't trust reptiles. 
But that's not the real problem. The real problem is our extended belief that there's logic to that distrust, that it's natural and well-founded. Palmer. How's Yale? Is he awake? Oh yeah! Go check on him before he falls asleep again. Although, try not to bother him with too many questions. Will this have long-term effects on his health? Um, it's too soon to tell. He did have a heart attack, after all. Go away. I don't want to see you. The doctor told me to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying, but it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's clenching his fist, a sign of contained anger. Mm -hmm. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd <laughs> think he's lying. But that's not the case. Clenched fist, fast heart rate, fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. Why? I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... I saved your life, son. Maybe my aunt feels gratitude. I certainly don't. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. Who killed Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. Dunn was too short to hang himself with that rope. So, it's true? He was murdered. See more, do we? Anything else? Are sure that? Is he lying, or did his heart rate speed up out of rage? Is he holding back his rage? He's still doing the same things. Staring at me. His pupils just dilated. Did I surprise him? Cut off the fight. I know Dunn threatened to call off the fight. Why? How do you know that? I'm a detective. That was his anger talking. He never really meant it. That doesn't matter. Why was he so mad at you? What did you do? Nothing. Joe thought that I wasn't training hard enough. That I was going to lose. All right, let's just say that I, I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted? And who also happens to have a mo- I... I don't know. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to- Jake Ostiami. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. Frank? What about Frank Cassidy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. 
Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status. That Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. Poor Cassidy. Maybe it was... What am I saying? Jake could never pull off something like that. <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> no, no, he, he's too stupid to do that. What about Sonia Dunn? Sonia? I doubt it. She's odd, but she's his daughter. I've seen worse, believe me. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, uh... uh you know, my father disappeared when I was six, right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later, he still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, you're risking your life to find his murderer. Thanks. You're welcome. Yay. Look more there. Yeah, it's normal. Back. He seems restless. Should I tell someone? The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. Huh, let's play the... Oops. See, there's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. I have nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh, good thing she's got trauma surgery at 1230, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know, and, and and for bringing him in. Okay. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but I need to take a look at his medical report. Yeah. And we get the card again. Nothing else. As we have here. Boots. Round. Look at those. There. Ugh. Mom. <laughs> Hey, there's something on the table too. Hard to get back. And nothing else here. A little bit brainstorming. Hmm. Okay. No, the footprints don't match. If Yale killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Yeah. Let's see a little bit more. We need the papers. Not yet. We don't call yet.
You need to see the... What are we looking at? Huh. Talk with her. You're awake, handsome? What are you looking at here? Hmm. Smokes. Yeah, now I know. Okay. Anything else here? Rina. Yale's medical report is right there. Mind if I take a look? Nope. Mm, no, I don't think so, handsome. Mm. I'll take a pack of Morley's, please. Honey, get me a pack of Morley's for Mr. Handsome. Show too much. What if you show me Yale's report and I'm like a dinner? You're handsome, all right, but I'm not stupid. I won't be able to read Yale's medical report if she's around. Mm -hmm. Like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12:30 surgery in four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? And more cards. Nice. Jerry. Hello. Long time no see. Black sir, I didn't want to wake you. How's the boy? Asleep. I hope he recovers in time for the fight. I got tickets! Although between you and me, he doesn't stand a chance. It'll be a fun bout, nonetheless. Not like this. God, this is boring. <laughs> Are the odds against Yale that bad? The boy's talented, don't get me wrong. But stone is stone, you know? I bet half my pay, but you know, no vice for me. You want to smoke? Don't smoke or drink. No vice for me. Smoking's dirty. Alcohol goes straight to your head. And women, they're all just me. Well, everyone except mine. Uh, nice vice at all. Are you sure about that? Not even one little vice? Nope. Between you and me, when someone gives in to vice, it's because something's missing. Something in their life just isn't right. I've got a good wife, a good job, a good house, a good TV, and a good hobby. Sports. Well, watching them, that is. What else do I need, eh? Black said, vice is for losers. Man, I'm bored. Good job. You say you've got a good job, 
and yet you're bored. Well, it's just a figure of speech, really. I like my job. Is it boring? Yes, but I can entertain myself with a fight or a football game. Well, watching them, that is. Well, I'm going back in. Okay. We have to... Some kind of plan that we get the nurse away from there. And so we can get the Yale's medical records. Huh. Uh, trauma. Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask his calling, please? Okay. Sherry, this is Dr. Talbot. We have to reschedule the 12.30 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, Tell them it's a matter of life or death. Understood? A matter of life and death. A matter of life and death. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> All right, now. I know about this. I need something that you have. Oh. Only to guess why I'm giving it to you. You want to help me solve a criminal investigation. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back. Hey. What? What does it say here? Ah, you know, doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey, no means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that... There you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? <laughs> Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, my fellow, this is my wife, Jerry. Your... I'll be damned. <laughs> you didn't even say you were married. Well, future wife. Between you and me, I knew you'd settle down eventually. Just you wait. You'll even quit smoking with this one. All right, let her in. But don't do anything naughty. So now we're married. Did you like that? Don't play with me, Mr. Blackside. <laughs> anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. Oh, no. She's gonna do something stupid. Sonia, don't. You killed my father! You said so yourself! Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. He almost killed you in that Lucy's apartment! How could he not be guilty? You can't take justice into your own hands. Believe me, it will haunt you as long as you live. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? Your father sacrificed everything to pay your way through college. If you do this, you'll destroy the future your father wanted you to have. It's okay. I came back from Los Angeles as soon as I could. I told you not to rush back. Come on now, honey. Hey. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? No, this is John Blackside, the detective who found Bobby. Oh, so this is strictly professional. I thought you had some good news for your uncle. No, Uncle Tim, don't be silly. Don't be silly. Look at you. Smart, educated, as dazzling as the brightest of stars. 
Every single man in this city should be at your feet. Come on, we'd better let rest. Hmm. I see. Let's say you're right and Bobby Yale is innocent. Who should we focus on now? We? Well, your father turned down my money, but he made me promise one thing, that I'd take care of you if anything happened to him. But I can... I know you're perfectly capable of managing that gym on your own, but we don't even know if he'll be ready to fight Stone. Besides, someone seems really invested in stopping that fight, and someone has to pay Mr. Blacksad to get to the bottom of all this. Please, talk some sense into her. It's your life. As much as you love your uncle, it's up to you to decide whether you want his help or not. Blacksad, I was just starting to like you. All right. Thank you, uncle. Thank you so much. All right, stop crying or you'll ruin your makeup, honey. Now fix yourself up and I'll buy you some breakfast. Uh, wait, my purse. I'll get it. it must Blacksad, be wait a minute. I think she needs some time alone, just like you and me. Listen, boy, do whatever it takes to find Joe's murder. Whatever it takes. If things get messy, don't worry. I'll clean them up. Deal? Sure. I'll do my best. Thank you. I trust you to get that ball to the end zone. No. Are you telling stories about the great Iron Arm again? Wait a minute. Of course. The Milestone's quarterback, Tim Iron Arm Thor. <laughs> It's a good thing folks usually recognize me sooner. Like I said, you coming to breakfast? I'd love to, but I have to go ask for a favor. Okay. That was a lot of... Uh, scenes. Uh... The investigation required to ask Jack for a small favor. Or demand it. If worse can worse. Okay, it's time to stop here. One hour is uh, approaching. One hour is approaching, and I'm trying to stop here. We have a lot of looking, listening. I don't have much of talking. Let's see next time. Next weekend. Same place, same game. Have a good day. Bye.